Today we begin the New Mexico style book club series. Once a month we'll showcase a New Mexico author and discuss their work. And what we'll do is we'll cover classic fiction to novels, biographies to memoirs, and nonfiction to science fiction. Truly there is something for everyone. I'm kind of feeling a little Oprah-like. This is something I've always wanted to do. And I'm so pleased to say that our first author, Scott Tyson wrote The Unobservable Universe, and this book definitely falls into the science fact or fiction category. You can see the book right there, depending on your point of view. So first of all, good morning, Scott. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here, Nikki. Thank you for having me as Thanks a guest. Thanks for being here. And you know, we kind of have something in common. We're both originally from the Northeast. You're originally from Long Island. Yes, I am. You have to say it like that, by the way, Long Island. Long Island. Right? I'm exit 42 on the LIE. That's where I live. <laughs> I don't miss that traffic, right? <laughs> Not no. at all. But you make your home now in Albuquerque. So obviously, you know, this is a this special place for you. And at an early age, I want to let the viewers know that you were really captivated by quantum mechanics and relativity and philosophy, kind of the things that all kids are, except for me, maybe, <laughs> are interested in. So how did you become curious at such a young age about all the mysteries of the universe? Uh, you know, I'm not exactly certain how it happened, but I know that by the time I was in uh, second or third grade, I was completely captivated by everything that was going on in space. And of course, wow. the, uh, our nation's space program was, was fledgling at that po uh, point, and it was yeah. starting out, and I was totally captivated. I listened to uh, every broadcast from space I sent away and had uh, <laughs> virtually every publication from NASA plastering the walls oh of my, my bedroom. Gosh. So uh, I was just completely consumed with, I love with it. the thought of space. Well, as a physicist and researcher, you also served as an advisor to the Secretary of Defense, by the way, and worked a number um, of labs around the country so you really you really put your passion into play and into your work and so you also have worked for Sandia National Laboratory so can you tell us a little bit about your work there sure uh, in fact when I was a child I, I thought I wanted to be an astronaut as I got older uh, my uh, interest in being an astronaut sort of tempered okay. uh, and um, so as an adult I worked in a variety of labs as you mentioned mm -hmm. Sandia National Labs I also worked at uh, IBM oh, wow. uh, and I worked at Johns Hopkins uh, University Applied Physics Lab to, to name a few wow. and, and the fact of the matter is that electronics uh, of the sort that may be uh, in our cell phones mm -hmm. uh, won't operate in space. They work perfectly fine in the terrestrial environment, wow. but they won't work in space for a number of reasons, and those include things like radiation effects and, and, and thermal effects. So my job was to help figure out ways in which electronics could be modified, okay. uh, could, could be constructed so that they could last within uh, the space environment. And unlike your, the computer on your desk where you can just hit the big red button and right. reboot it, the electronics in space have to work for, uh, in some cases, decades. Oh, okay. uh, uh, flawlessly. Yeah, and, and in the book you obviously propose this theory and you, you talk a little bit about it, so can you, can you kind of share the theory itself? Uh, the, the concept of my book? Well, yeah. my book provides a new and a thoroughly scientific framework uh, yeah. by which to uh, uh, understand all physical phenomena within the universe. It's, it's, it's amazing, it's amazing. <laughs> so, tell us, so tell us a little bit about it. Well, it, 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 it eliminates all of the paradoxes with which uh, humanity, and most notably science, have been grappling in some cases for thousands of years. Yeah. So my book represents the culmination of uh, 35 years of thought experiments and, and research Gosh. to um, achieve Einstein's life goal to unify the fundamental forces mm -hmm. and to reveal what's called the theory of everything that underlies all physical phenomena within oh, wow. the universe. It's, it's so intriguing to me. I mean, what inspired you in the first place to write the book? <laughs> Well, uh, you had a segment earlier about uh, a teacher who won the Golden Apple yes. Award, and I would like to say that when I was 17 years old, I was fortunate uh, uh, enough to have the most spectacular uh, science teacher. Aww. He was not your typical science teacher. His name was Mr. Ferry. Uh, he was my AP chemistry teacher, uh, again, when I was 17 years old. And um, he wasn't your typical science teacher. He, okay. Of course, he wore the lab coat, but, <laughs> but he also wore a gym whistle and he wasn't afraid uh, uh, of using it. And he really uh, motivated his students, and he motivated me to take a hard look at the quantum mechanics, at the paradoxes of quantum mechanics of the 1970s. Mm. And, and that, uh, those are very much the same 
uh, paradoxes yeah. that we're contending uh, with today. So uh, that was my initial motivation. At that point, it became yeah. my identity. Uh, it's, it was all I thought and, and talked about. And of course, as a 17-year-old, <laughs> uh, you learn pretty quickly on dates that uh, discussing <laughs> uh, the uh, underlying physics of the universe doesn't make for, uh, for, for the most successful date. <laughs> so, so I learned to make it my secret identity. Okay. And, 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 it, and I spent the next 35 years uh, um, performing research and reading what I could to gain the perspective uh, to start the book. In 2010, I read a book by Dr. Robert Lanza that really gave me some new ways to look at the universe okay. and uh, prompted me to return to my uh, interest at 17 years old to write a book. What it's, was it's the book called? Uh, no, this is the book. Oh, so, these are, oh I, but at 17, book. I knew I was writing this book, and it's so you had this book in your head. That's right. At you 17, knew. I wrote the table of contents for this oh book. Oh my gosh! And when I started writing the book uh, in during the autumn of 2010, uh, my wife ironically found uh, the table of contents that I wrote when I was 17 years old. Wow! And it was nearly identical. So this book has been inside me for uh, for absolute uh, decades. And a lot of people have that, but they don't actually put it into action and and I have to mention this I don't want to interrupt you but I, I want to tell you that you know we've all heard of the Big Bang Theory we've all heard of it and you know you say that you feel that the Big Bang Theory basically describes the origin of the universe that that whole theory is wrong so why is that Right. In fact, I contend within my book that the, uh, that, uh, the Big Bang Theory is all just a really big misunderstanding. Really? Uh, in, in, in fact, uh, the Big Bang Theory is sort of the basis for more mysteries and paradoxes involving the universe than, just per than perhaps anything uh, else that science uh, has offered. Um, and, and it started out back uh, in 1915 when, when Einstein had published his general theory of relativity. Mm -hmm. uh, he had asserted that the universe was, in fact, Static, and what that meant was that the universe was neither expanding uh, nor contracting. Right. Uh, and and to and to make it fit that static model, he introduced something uh, uh, called the cosmological constant. And okay. and for uh, quite some time, science uh, accepted the fact that the universe uh, was a was a static universe. But then in 1927. A scientist by the name of George Lemaitre published an article uh, called the Hypothesis of the Primeval Atom. Uh, in, uh, and, and that article, which was published in a peer review uh, journal and became quite a sensation uh, in the global press, mm -hmm. became the basis for what la later became uh, known as the Big Bang Theory. Now, now, it also turns out, interestingly, that George Lemaitre was an ordained Catholic priest. Oh, really? And he admitted decades later that his article uh, that he had published in 1927 uh, was really an attempt to wrap a shroud of science around his uh, belief in uh, the Old Testament story of, uh, uh, of Genesis. Gosh, uh, and, there's so, and there's obviously you'll learn so much more just by reading the book. It's an education, I promise you that much. And what do you hope that our readers will take away from this book when they read it? Um, I think the really important thing is to question your world and question uh, uh, the beliefs that exist within the science community today. The fact of the matter is there are an enormous number of questions that today's science is, is simply incapable uh, of answering. And what's important is for you to assess that information for yourself and to ask and ask, ask questions. And ask, ask questions. Ask questions. And question I want to mention that you actually have a few speaking engagements that are scheduled pertaining to the book. So, of course, our readers and our viewers can go and meet you in person. So, can you give our viewers a little more detail? Absolutely. Um, I'll be giving a. Um a uh, talk on the physics of human perception okay. uh, throughout the spring. Nice. Uh, the name of my talk is Pardon Me, But Your Paradoxes Are Showing. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be presenting that at uh, a variety of the city's senior multi-generational facilities. Okay. Uh, this weekend I'll be uh, doing a private talk to uh, the uh, local uh, IONS chapter later this month. Great. I'll be uh, giving a lecture as part of the Johns Hopkins University Colloquium uh, Lecture Series. Fantastic. And we'll have more information on our website of where everybody can find you. You're very interesting and smart and we <laughs> want to learn more. Thank you so much for being with us, Scott. Okay, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and don't go away because it is March and we are mad for College Hoops Care. TV News 13 Sports Director Van Tate has your ticket to the big dance and he's next on New Mexico Style.